Hello guys, good day. So nice to see you again and I hope um, you will take a look at this video before the examination. You know I'll be praying for you and I wish you all the best. Let's start with module 6, Health Management Information System. Yeah. So every module class, we are getting to know um, each of the information systems. So number one, we're going to define our health manage management information system or HMIS, enumerate the determinants of HMIS yeah, for its performance, identify the function and role, discuss the performance of your routine systems management framework. Yeah. So yes, yeah, let's start already. And yeah. before we begin, let me just ask this question and hopefully you would reflect on it. What can be the impacts of manually manning documents in healthcare? Class every day, the health system, a health unit, class produces so much information, so much data, class. And what if we are still manning it manually? I hope you're going to think about it all throughout this um, lecture, then eventually appreciating HMIS. So here are the examples. Number one, incomplete information to address the nature of problems. Class, um, how could we address a problem in health information if we don't have the enough tools, enough data that to let us know that there is a problem in the first place. You know? We don't have the enough tools to handle such problem. So there's a lag in um, intervening, um, intervening with the current health problems. Number two, absence of real-time data and delays in the receipt of data. So class, having real-time data, just like in COVID-19, is very valuable. So if we are still manning manually our data, there can be an absence of real-time yeah, data. Next class, inventory of medicine and equipment was a tedious task due to lack of standards in filing names and codes in the institution. Class, imagine the number of medicines, the different equipments that the hospital needs to account for or to have inventory on. Yeah. So class, um, managing these resources is tedious. Yeah. Imagine, um, isn't it that the DOH yeah, facilitates the procurement of such equipment? So how can they keep track of these different equipments, the different PPEs that they are acquiring, the different ventilators that they are acquiring during this COVID-19? If they won't, if they won't automate the the inventory of this equipment, but next class. Difficulty in retrieval and high cost of maintaining proper storage. Class, this paper, yeah, this paper are really thin. And class, um, to retrieve it, someone should man the record station. Yeah. Since ang rami raming papel, class, meron dapat nakakaalam kung saan mahanap tong mga documents na to. So, difficulty in retrieval and high cost of maintaining proper storage. So, class, the place should be fireproof it should be big because you are handling box and boxes filing cabinets and filing cabinets of documents so ang hirap talaga if we are ma still manually manning our healthcare documents what else stool stools <laughs> Tools such as snapshot, snapshots and dashboard which are necessary in the analysis of the performance of hospitals were unavailable. Plus, you know, the power of computer, if you're just going to highlight it, it will form a graphical summary. If you will just highlight a series of documents, just like in epidemiology, we could already make a graph, we could already make a um, line graph, scatter plot, class a table with just the power of our computer. Yeah, and, and the person could already have a snapshot or an overview of the um, of the data, of the meaning of the data in the report. So, class, ang valuable talaga ng mga tools na to in dashboard. So, if it's unavailable, yeah, we cannot address our problems immediately. What else? Last, 
inability to monitor the equipment and drugs could not be an inability to monitor the equipment and drugs could not be obtained resulting to problems in accountability monitoring of expiry dates stocks and auto indenting and so class yun if you want to keep track of our equipments and drugs and if it's running out hopefully we will all already have an auto indenting so auto indenting is a form that we fill out to request for a new set of drugs or equipment yan so class for those processes to be easier and if you are manning a big hospital class yan an information system is very important so definition of our HMIS, so our WHO broken, broken, bro, broken down, yan, binreak down niya itong ano natin, HMIS. So health <coughs> component of HMIS refers to clinical studies to understand medical terminologies, clinical procedures, and database process. Health component, mm, so so that we could understand um, our health completely. Yun, so it breaks down, it makes us understand the different terminologies, the procedures, and the processes. Next, management principles that help administer the healthcare enterprise. And information system refers to the ability to analyze implement applications for efficient and effective transfer of patient information. So basically class, our HMIS yan, is a type of a data collection system. Yan. So it has applications that allow us to manage health properly yan, or the health sector or the data that we are collecting from the health sector properly. Anyway class, as we go on, I'll discuss it more. Yeah. So what else? Yeah. So number one, it is one of the building blocks for essential, the building blocks essential for HSS class. HSS means health system strengthening, health system strengthening. So having HMIS yeah, is an essential tool so that we could strengthen our health system. What else? Number two. Data collection system specifically designed to support planning yeah, so that we can manage well our health facilities, decision making in our facilities and organization. Yeah. Next, guys, we have another definition here. Set of integrated components and procedures yeah, organized with the objective of generating information that will improve healthcare management decisions at all levels of the health system. So class, what's good about HMIS? Actually, this is a very broad information system that it can be used in the patient level or in the facility level in our rural health units, but it could also be used in our DOH. Yeah. So set of integrated components and procedures. I think today is the time that we're going to discuss the determinants of our um, health information systems. So class, we will discuss more about the components and procedures today. What else? Number four, it's a routine monitoring system. Routine monitoring system. Class, when we see something is routine, it is something that we always do. Yeah. So this is your um, example class in real life. What is your routine? What is your daily habit? Yeah. Class, do you already have a routine? Yeah. So class, for our health sector to be efficient yeah, so that we can monitor regularly our health programs, our um, health outcomes, our health status class, we need a routine monitoring system, something that checks up our or checks up or monitor or evaluates the things that we are doing in a regular basis. Ang class ang itong HMIS. It's a routine monitoring system. Class, it's some, it is scheduled. It is regularly performed so that we could know what's the status of our um, health programs, of our health facilities. Yeah? So it should be checked regularly. 
hindi lang kung kailan natin gusto, that evaluates the process with the intention of providing warning signals through the use of indicator. So class, you know what's good about a routine monitoring system? Example, in UB class, we have an annual, um, annual medical exam. Yan, annual medical exam. It is regularly done to monitor the health of the employees in University of Baguio. So class, what's good about routine monitoring um, um, annual checkup? Class, it, it um, gives a early warning signs if a person is having already hypertension since there is already increasing BP all throughout the years. Yet we could m easily monitor our um, employees and if there's something wrong, there's early warning signs, we can easily intervene yeah? and we can already recommend um, your employee, you need to exercise more or please less, um, eat less rice, something like that. Since in the annual um, employment uh, medical exam class, um, yeah, we, all, we check that. Here also in our routine monitoring system class, it evaluates the process with the intention of providing warning signals through the use of indicators. Um, class, what's good about our HMIS? It has signs for warning signals. Um, so say, um, it prematurely or preliminary detects errors. Yeah or prevents errors before it happens. Yeah. So, in class, so, isn't it that prevention is better than cure and prevention is cheaper than any therapy? Yeah. So, ibig sabihin, class, we can mitigate the errors that are happening at its early stages. And number five, class, HMIS is used by the health unit in charge in the health unit level, huh? and health unit management committee to plan and coordinate healthcare services in their catchment area or in their locality. So three concepts of HM, HMIS framework. Yeah. So class, um, basically these are the three things that your HMIS is trying to achieve. Yeah. It tries to be number one, relevant. Information collected is relevant to the policies and goals of the healthcare institution. Yeah. Period, guys. So meaning, class, um, your HMIS is based on the health information needs. Yeah. The needs, nothing less and nothing more. Yeah. It is very relevant, so it can be used by policymakers yeah. and to the responsibilities of health professionals at the level of collection. So it is based on the needs of our policymakers. It is based on the needs of our health professionals. It collects all the relevant data that, that will be needed for to support their decision making. Second one, class we have functional. So information collected is functional as it is to be used immediately for management and it is readily available and useful and should not wait feedback for higher levels. Yeah. Ganda. And third one class, it's integrated. Yeah. So one set of form is used. Yeah. So meaning you can use it in different devices. Yeah. And no duplication of reporting. Wow, efficient, guys. And finally, collected on a routine basis from every health unit. Let's say um, monthly, monthly, or quarterly, or annually. So, and then intention ng HMIS class. And what are the requirements of HMIS? Basahin natin class, let's um, explore it. So, number one. Complete. Complete with all information but avoiding duplication. Wow. So, it wants to be complete. And next, it should be consistent. Yeah. So, consistent as in consistent in assigning definitions to similar information from various resources as much as possible. Yeah. So, it, um, it's easier to integrate all different data coming from different sectors sectors if there is consistency with our HMIS. Next one is confidentiality. And class, ito is yung sa pinakamatinding um, 
issue to when it's issue when it comes to information system how secured are the patient's data so maintaining the privacy and security of patient data because class we are carrying many sensitive um, information next cost effective yeah so the cost of operation is sustainable for the facility especially in the philippines we are a developing country and user friendly eligible users must have access and should be able to use the system with ease and so that our that our users will use it all the time and if it's user friendly it will not be a barrier for the the users to not use it and class, the roles of HM, HMIS, I think we're just elaborating it. So provide quality information to support decision making. So class, we have this term garbage in and garbage out. So if you collect irrelevant information, it will produce irrelevant. If you will, pro, it will col, sorry, if you will collect irrelevant data, it will produce irrelevant information. So garbage in, garbage out. So class, so to provide quality information, so class, dapat the things that we are collecting should be relevant or of quality as well. Next, encouraging the use of health information in hospitals. We are removing barriers, different drawbacks that will prevent people from using information system and assist in the setting of performance targets at all levels of health service. So class, the other term for, for, for performance targets are indicators. Yeah. So class, so we can monitor our um, monitor our outcomes. We need indicators kasi ito yung mga ano natin, eh, mini-measure natin. Yeah. So we should we should set our goals, our indicators, or our performance targets so we could know if we are hitting the mark. Something like that. Okay, next class. So functions of HMIS class. So we have three major functions. Yeah? And under this, we have sub-functions. So we have data input, data management, and data output. <clears throat> so class, for data input, we have two. We have data acquisition and data verification. So when we say data acquisition, so acquisition, acquire, diba? so other terms is to obtain. So when we are obtaining and generation and collection of data, data acquisition or HMIS assists in faster mechanical reading and capturing of data. Yeah. So class, the first one, data, this term garbage in and garbage out. So class, um, we should place proper standards in, in data acquisition to make sure the reliability of our, um, the reliability of our data. That's why we have data, next off, data verification. So we authenticate or we validate our data. Because class, in transferring data, in the, sometimes in transferring data, there can be discrepancies yeah, because of the format. Yeah. So determine whether data was accurately, accurately translated when data is transferred from one source to another. It is complete and supports the processes in the system. Usually class, um, these are the work of our information technologies, yung mga IT natin. So they are checking for inconsistency. So they are making codes that will assess for inconsistencies in ensuring the reliability of data sources yeah. so make sure that the data sources are coming from legitimate sources coming from legitimate health units so class example in the laboratory example some tests are only for men example class is 
prostate specific antigen yan. it's only for male yan. so class some, sometimes perhaps some people will make clerical errors that the patient is a woman and they will request for prostatic specific antigen yan. so class there's if there's um uh, data verification then it will be better so that the patient will not spend money for PSA, especially if they're a, a woman, something like that, diba? So, wapatas ng estrogen class, and it's um, it apparently um, um, an error occurred, and lalaki pala yung patient, diba? Something like that. So, there is a need for data verification. Yeah. So, next sa tayo class, we have data management. Interesting na itong class. Number, first one. So, data management. Meron tayong data storage, data classification, and computation and update. So, class for data storage, so, there's a challenge in, or, in the organization on preserving our data and making sure that it is secured. Yan, conserving and maintenance of the integrity and safety or the security of data. And class, um, apparently, um, we cannot actually store store all data, diba? So now it's 2020, yeah. So do they still have the capacity? The organization, the organizations should set um certain rules or certain standards that they will do on how long they will keep their data. So example class in the clinical laboratory, actually it's in our law, in our RA5527 or RA4468. Anyway, class, or AO, or AO21. Anyway, class, nasa batas natin that we have um, that anatomic pathology reports in the laboratory should be perpetually stored. Yeah, it should be kept. Anatomic pathology reports. Mom, what are these anatomic pathology reports? Yeah, reports that are coming from tissues, yeah, from biopsies. Plus, um, because the our patients can use it, can use this anatomic pathology reports. Reports whether there are they have cancer or they have benign tumors. Plus, these reports are important in. Various documents, just like SSS, I think immigration, migration, something like that. Kailangan ng anatomic pathology reports. Or perhaps they can use it in court so that we, we should keep it perpetually. Class, ma'am, how long is perpetually? Indefinitely. Ma'am, how long is indefinitely? As long as we are able. Yeah, for a very long time. And what else, class? In clinical laboratory results, the results of urinalysis, um, CBC, chemistry reports, we only keep it for a year. Yeah. So that's our loss. Yeah. And that's, so we are not liable when we are destroying data coming from um, other years when if it's a clinical laboratory result, but if it's an atomic pathology result, result class, yeah, we are liable to keep it for as long as we are able. Yeah. So, kaya ang class, no? Galing, no? So, yun, depending on the organization, they should set st standards on how they will maintain and conserve their data. Yeah. Because conserving data, storing it, yeah, holding it, deleting it, and backing it, backing it up is pricey. Yeah. So, depending on the capacity of our facility. Next class. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Next class. <laughs> Data classification. Yeah. So we are organizing our data into categories. Mom, what type of categories? Based on sensitivity and value to the organization. Plus, galing no, ganun pala. If it's altered, stolen, and destroyed. So class, depending on the facility, we should um we should assess it, its sensitivity, how valuable is it to, to the organization. Of course, class, the more valuable it is, the more sensitive it is, it requires more security measures that to be um, to be implemented. And it helps an organization understand the value of its data, determine whether the data is at risk, and implement controls to met mitigate the risk. Yeah. So if the data is very valuable, we should implement security controls. Yeah. 
to to prevent breaches in our um, data security. Plus, I don't know if you are familiar with Garmin. Yan. So, Garmin is a company that is data-driven. So, their, their, the, their products are watches, sports watches, which tracks the GPS, um, blood type, class. If my friends who are very sports enthusiast class love the brand Garmin. And so class, um, mas, ano siya, um, it's better, um, it's a good tracker of health among uh, legit athletes. Yeah. If they want more than, if you want to use more than the Apple Watch, something like that. So class, this Garmin class, for one week less, um, their data was hijacked. Yan. So, a couple of um, people who have malicious intent um, hijacked their servers. And now, they're, they're, for a week, their data has been um, on hold or have, has been kidnapped class or hijack na lang ata yung damang term. So, yun, they are asking for ransom to get that server back and I don't know what how the story ended but, yun, Garmin for a week, um, for a week could not sync to, uh, to sports app, something like that. So, ganun, class, so, ang tinde. And class, um, just nice to know about the sensitivity of data based on our data classification. What are, I just want to um, give you a glimpse. What are the high sensitivity data in the high sensitivity data in the hospital or in the laboratory that we collect and low sensitivity data? So in high sensitivity, so example, financial records, yeah. So the bills of our patients or the earnings of the hospital or the facility. If the facility has intellectual property, example, if the facility, um, the organization is a pharmaceutical company and, and they're making COVID-19 vaccine, yeah, those data are highly sensitive because isn't it that there's a high competition with making the vaccine, right? Authentication data, the passwords and the different, um, the different, right? class, uh, username, something like that, physical and mental health conditions, class, sexual health, drug addiction, class, you know, in the laboratory, we carry very high sensitive data. Those people who test for HIV, whether positive sila or negative, those people who test for drug, drug testing, those people who are tested positive for sexually transmitted diseases, not only HIV class, those who are tested um, not in the lab per se, but those who have mental health condition class, all this are high sensitive information. What else class? We ask our patients um, in HIV counseling, how many were their sexual partners? Yeah, and those are a high sensitive um, data that we need to keep. Yeah, and next class, medium sensitivity. So mails and documents with no confidential data. So emails yeah, and, and within the organization. And low sensitivity class, so data which are found in their public website. Milling, no? So class, when a data is high sensitivity, so there must be um, security um, controls that should be in place yeah, to prevent the breach of data. Yeah. So for Garmin, their business is data. Class, their business is data. And apparently, these hackers hack their servers and wherein their data are on hold so class their business actually is at stake if that happens and class and same thing with the healthcare system so if there is a data breach yeah so it could mar the trust of people in our facility diba, in healthcare they might not trust us anymore if th those things are happening and data management, what else? We have data computation. So we utilize algorithms, mathematical models, linear equations, quadratic, yeah. So to manage our data and data update, yeah. So data update or modification of, of data that is already in the database. 
facilitates new and changing information and requires constant monitoring. And class, um, only, only um, eligible users should update the data of the infer um, data of the patient example only doctors could update um, their patients only the patient's doctor could update their data and so plus example in the laboratory we could the thing that we could only update our laboratory results not billing results not patient's history not patient's health status but on only laboratory results and class, we have our data output. So we have retrieval and presentation. So class, um, there should be ease of retrieval of or obtaining our or extracting our data. Yeah, and so so that we could um, address the current problems. Yeah, and we use query. Yeah, and we use a query. So we type it down, and our data should be easily um, obtained. Yeah, and so. Yeah, for transfer and distribution. And we have data presentation. So reporting of the interpretation of information. We organize our data into summary reports, graphs, and statistical reports. This is important for assessing the trends and patterns when it comes to our health facility or our health unit or with our patient. The best methods to use for presenting data varies on the type of information, volume, complexity of data, and the audience. Yeah. So class example, um, different levels of authority um, receives different types of data. Yeah. So class, if I'm the medical technologist yeah, and I want to give a report to my supervisor class, and it's very specific. I can show her the results of the control. I can show her the number of the patients, who were our patients, what were the results for my direct supervisor or the head of my um, department. But class, um, my head of department give a diff reports a different um, report to the chief medical technologist. The chief ch medical technologist doesn't need to see all the results of the patient and yeah, doesn't need to see to see the the different um, reagents that has been used. She only needs the the level of the inventory, how many patients did we cater for that week or that month, something like that. So class plus actually as you go higher to the pedestal, the information becomes more simpler. Yeah. More simpler based on their information needs. And so depending on the our audience. So class here are the possible functions in an HMIS. So these are the specific function of our HMIS. So isn't it that we just learned the general function? Now these are the specific function. Plus I want you to read on this function. So we have client data, managing client data, scheduling, authorization tracking. We track the authorized personnel, the billing, account receivables, and when it's in the inventory, reporting, medical records, financial data class. So your HMIS is very broad. Class, I want you to read that up. And finally, class, the determinants of HMIS performance area. Actually, class, these are the determinants of all health information system for it to work class and this determinants this three determin determinants must be in place so that um, we could maximize the performance of our hmis class the same thing with um let's have a metaphor here the same thing with online classes yeah to maximize the online classes we need to see the different determinants. Yeah, and we should break it down into determinants so we could maximize our online classes. So, ikaw compare ko yun dun, ha? Um, <laughs> okay, class, let's start. When we say determinants, these are factors that impacts 
the performance. Isn't it that we use the, the, ter the term determinants in health? Isn't it that we have different determinants for health, just like social determinants, just like political determinants, just like environmental determinants, just like genetic determinants of health, meaning these factors impact your health. Same thing with your health information systems, or specifically your HMIS. So let's start with number one. Whew. <laughs> Behavioral determinants, class. Your behavior, yeah. The people's behavior, the people's attitude, class, um, will either hinder or it's a drawback or it will push the HMIS forward, yeah. So, class, our knowledge with the use of care, here, dito muna tayo, the knowledge, the competence of the user with using the HMIS, the skills that they have, their confidence level, their attitude, their motivation to do, to use, to utilize your HMIS is an important factor for it to work. Yeah. Sabi dito, the lack of motivation and enough knowledge on the use of data has been found to be a major drawback in the quality, data quality and information use. Yeah. So class behavior, the behavior of users um, are important when it comes to HMIS. So since these factors affect HMIS, there's there's a need that we need to modify modify. We need to motivate the users, we need to train them more. They should find appreciation on the utilization of HMIS, guys. So guys, the same thing with online learning so um we can maximize online learning only if you also have the motivation and the right attitude for online learning class you know i all i emphasized the importance of health information system topic on our first day on our second day on earth are all i'm always emphasizing it's important importance because if you don't appreciate what we're learning today then there's no joy there's no motivation there's no encouragement in studying his yeah so class behavioral determinants is one of the factors that will allow online classes to succeed and also our hmis yeah. next class organizational determinants, the structure of our health institution, the available resources, the procedures that are in place, if there are support, the culture within or the organization class affects the HMIS. Let's go to online classes class. So the organization, so as of now, you are in your households, you are within the family, class the dynamic of the family the structure of the family the family circumstances affect online learning so diba class po inuutusan kayo sa bahay every time there's online learning or there are issues that there there something going on so this can be drawbacks in our online learning yeah so there can be factors something like that example slow yung internet connection sa bahay or the class, natural calamities, umilan lang onte, wala ng internet. Plus, these are also determinants which are which are affecting your um, online learning. So, class, we also have organizational determinants. How the culture and the organization impacts the use of HMIS. If there is a low use, uh, there's no culture in the organization of loving health information system or utilizing health information system. Example, example class. Um, um, back then, back then, so um, let's say I am the youngest in the faculty room. And I'm the youngest in the faculty room. And you know, many of my colleagues are older than me. And many of them struggled with online learning, but they're trying their best. Yeah. Um, one of the hindrances that are stopping them from facilitating online learning is the lack the, is the culture within the organization that we're really not promoting before 
before COVID, we're really not promoting um, flip classrooms or flexible learning. We're in, we utilize videos or the internet to facilitate our learning. Back then, it's, it was not the culture yet in University of Baguio. But class, this COVID-19 class pushed us to the limits. Not only my older colleagues, the seasoned colleagues, but also me, yeah, to to really maximize online learning. So now, it's in the culture of UB to maximize online learning, something like that. So class, if there is continuous support from the top management, and if your boss is supporting you, encouraging you, use HMIS, and I will train you, I will give you the resources, I will give you the support. Yeah. Just like your parents class, if they're really supportive, supportive they, it is very encouraging diba, to perform online classes. If they, we have top management support. Kung sila tayo sino supportan tayo, diba? There are policies in place in for HMIS, then it could really happen. Yeah. Galing, no? So, ang raming factors para magamit natin ng HM, HMIS or anything. <laughs> or for anything involving in ano, including online learning. In class, we have technical determinants. I think this is about the machinery yeah, of the program of the software, technical technical things. So, involves the overall design used in collection of information. So, if the forms, reporting forms are complex, yeah, if the design is not user-friendly, if the forms, if the methods are difficult to do, class those are drawbacks when it comes to your HMIS. Yeah. So example class, so for online learning, yeah, if the modules are not clear, yeah, if the if the system, example Google Classroom seems to lag all the time, then this can be this can all be barriers with our online learning. These are their technical determinants. So, ayan guys. So, that's it for today. Yeah, and thank you for being with me. Thank you for listening to me. I'll see you again. Bless. God bless with your examination.